Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another online lesson for math studies. Last lesson, we focused on finding the mean and mode of grouped continuous data. This class, we're going to be focusing on finding the median of grouped continuous data. And we're going to do that in a totally different way. We're also going to look at upper and lower quartiles, define those terms, as well as inner quartile range. We'll begin with some terms of notation. We start with the median. The key to finding median for grouped continuous data is found using something called a cumulative frequency graph. Now, the term cumulative frequency, we've heard that before. It was introduced two classes ago. And you can use uh, cumulative frequency essentially to keep a running total of all your data. The more data you've looked at, the higher the cumulative frequency goes, and it takes into account everything you've seen before as well as the new data. And so when we graph that, we're going to see this graph that essentially grows over time. And we'll take a look at an example of that in a moment. And then we need to uh, take something called the 50th percentile and use that in conjunction with the graph to find our median. So it's all about 50th percentile and something called a cumulative frequency graph. Again, we'll look at that in one moment. Percentiles. Percentiles, obviously the root of the word is percent. With a percentile, we're talking about a certain percentage, uh, how much data is below that or is above that. So we would say the 50th percentile is the median, meaning there's 50% of the data above it, 50% of the data below it. The 25th percentile is referred to as the lower quartile, and it means that there is 25% of the data or total frequencies below. So 25% below. The 75th percentile is the upper quartile, meaning if we broke this into quarters, 75th percentile is the upper quarter, Q sub 3 of the data, and it has 75% of the total frequencies below it. And that's why it's called the 75th percentile. Uh, and then finally, interquartile range, you take Q sub 3 minus Q sub 1. Again, Q sub 3 was the 75th percentile, and we subtract the 25th percentile. And we'll be looking at that in a variety of contexts, both today and on future lessons. So for our one example here, we have what's called a cumulative frequency curve. Again, this is continuous data, meaning that our variable that we have here on the x-axis, the annual income in British pounds, is continuous. And we see that with money. You can have, you know, a dollar, you can have two dollars, five dollars, or in this case, pounds. And we're going by thousands, so we have 5,000 and we have 10,000 pounds. But you can also have lots of values in between there. You can have, you know, uh, you know, cents, decimals, fractions of actual monetary units. So it's a measurement, a measurement of money, uh, continuous in that sense. Once again, we have frequency happening here on our y-axis, but it's cumulative frequency. And so as we increase in our uh, values, or let me, let me look at another way to say this. So how many pieces of data did we have that were 5,000 pounds or below? Well, we can follow that up here, and we see that there were 20 pieces of data that were 5,000 or below. 20 pieces of data between 0 and 5,000. Now, as we keep adding up, we say, okay, well, let's go to 10,000. If we follow that up here, just below 60, so maybe 58, 59, somewhere around there, but right around 60 pieces of data were 10,000 and below, 10,000 and below. Um, so what if we just want to find, for example, the data between 20 and 60? Well, we know that there were 20 pieces of data from 5,000 and below, and we know that uh, 60 was 10,000 and below. So between 20 and 60, which is 40, a difference of 40, there were 40 things that were between the 5,000 and the 10,000 in this group right here, that range. And I could do that again for the 15,000. Again, assuming that this is about 60 here at 10,000, and I go to 15,000. And follow that up to the graph, and then it hits at about 100. So once again, between 100 and 60, 
There's a difference of 40. 100 minus 60 gives me 40. So that means there were 40 pieces of data that were somewhere in here, in between 10,000 and 15,000. Now, how many pieces of data do we have total? Well, cumulative frequency adds them all up. So all of our data is 200. And if we follow that along here to my graph and then straight down, we see that all of these salaries that are shown here on this graph are 35,000 or less. And that's pounds. Again, pounds are worth more than dollars, so it's not like $35,000. Eh, almost twice that. Um, and of the 200 salaries that were looked at, all were 35000 or less. So let's see if we can now use this graph to answer some questions. Again, the graph above shows cumulative frequency, so we've got a running total uh, for the yearly incomes of 200 people. Again, we see that 200 right there. They didn't even have to tell us that. And again, our graph actually goes all the way up to the 200. I suppose our scale could go even higher, like all the way to 250, but our graph only goes to 200, so we've got 200 people. We're going to use the graph now to estimate the following questions. First and foremost, the number of people who earn less than 5,000 Great British Pounds per year. The number of people. So we kind of did that one already. First and foremost, find the 5,000 Great British Pounds per year. You see the 5,000 right there. Now, you're always going to be using the graph. It'll be helpful when you have a worksheet here and you can write right on it. But we take the 5,000, we follow it up until I hit the actual cumulative frequency curve, which happens right there, right at that point. Then I immediately change course and I follow it over to my y-axis. And it shows that there were 20 people, 20 people that earned 5,000 or less. And uh, that is our value. The median, now that was part of our learning intention here. Median salary of the group of 200 people. Well, we said that to find median, we we're going to use a cumulative frequency graph. And we have that here. We also said we were going to focus on the 50th percentile. Well, we have 200 things. The 50th percentile is the spot where we have 50% of the data below it. So an easy way to find that is actually multiply by 50%. But we don't multiply percents, we change them to decimals. So if you have 50%, you move the decimal twice, and that becomes 0.5 or 0 0.50. So we're taking half or 50% of 200, which equals 100. So 100, and again, you can sort of see that here, 100 is halfway through my data. Now, that's not my median. That just means that if I you know, listed all the people and put them in order of their salary from you know, 1 to 200, right around the 100th value is where our median would be located. Now we need to actually find out how much that person makes. So we start at the 100, our 50th percentile. I draw the line again until I hit the graph. And the graph looks like it hits almost right at 15,000. So what is our median salary? It is 15,000. Now, if you try to get that answer anyway, other than writing on the graph, using your 50 percentile and following it over until you hit, you're not doing it correctly. That's not what I'm grading you on. I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but with this statistics, we are focusing in IB math studies on using these cumulative frequency graphs to find our medians. Again, when we use uh, grouped continuous data. All right, now we talk about interquartile range. That was another one of our terms. Well, we still have 200 people. The interquartile range is the third quartile minus the first quartile. To find our first quartile, we look at the 25th percentile. 25% of 200 is 50. So 50 is our first quarter. If we have two quarters, that would get us up to half, which would be 100. And then if we add another quarter on, that gets us to 150. So 50 and 150. Now, once again, those are not our actual pieces of data. That's just where we find them. So you still go ahead and draw. I'm estimating here right in between 40 and 60 should be 50, which is my Q sub 1, my first quartile, my 25th percentile. I will follow that along until I hit the graph and then come straight down. Now, I'm between 5,000 and 10,000. I'm definitely closer to 10,000, so I would say maybe 8,000, maybe even 8,500 or 9,000. I'm going to go with 8,000 for now. We'll say that that's about 8,000 for my Q sub 1, my first quartile, my 25th percentile. And now I still need um, my third quartile, Q sub 3, which again would happen right around 150. I follow that over, come straight down. 
And we can see that I'm closer to 20,000 than I am to 25,000. Might be like 21, 22, 21, 5, somewhere in that family. I will go with 22,000. And then we subtract. So to find our inner quartile range, sometimes abbreviated IQR, inner quartile range, we take Q sub 3 minus Q sub 1. So third quartile minus first quartile, the bigger number minus the smaller. So I have 22,000 minus 8,000, which gives me my IQR being 14,000. And that would be my answer for part C. Last but not least, the number of people who earn between 10,000 and 15,000 Great British Pounds per year. I'm going to do some erasing here because it's just too much to focus on for the moment. All right. Once again, you'll notice for each and every one of these, we did some math, but we also did a lot of drawing on the graph. That won't be any different here. So we start at 10,000. I follow that up. And we did this one. It was about 60 people. So we've got about 60 people who earn $10,000 or less, or 10,000 pounds, I'm sorry, or less. And then we do the 15,000. We follow that up, again, until we hit the graph, and it hits the graph right around 100. You'll notice that I'm not great at drawing straight lines here on this board, but just the important thing is correct. If my hand gets a little bit high, then I correct and get back low again. So that's what we're looking for there. Bring it up just a little bit. All right, so we have about, at 15,000, there's about 100 people uh, who make 15,000 or less. And if I want to find the people who just make in between that, I take the 100 minus the 60, and I'm left with 40 that make in between the 15,000 and the 10,000. So there are 40 people. And again, I should probably have labels on each of these, so they should probably all be Great British Pounds, Great British Pounds, Great British Pounds, and finally, people. All right, so that's a little introduction to cumulative frequencies, quartiles, interquartile range, and median of continuous grouped data. The book has some more problems with this. Most of them, they've already drawn the graph for you, though we will practice doing a little bit of uh, drawing the graphs on our own. But we'll see that on page 196, numbers 1 through 6.